behind, no words, will not be able to perform in a normal setting, can't comprehend, will never learn to talk, weakness in core muscles, won't be able to function in society, delayed, below grade level, will always require assistance, did not meet goals. Wow, I'm so glad that God is in control of my life. As you can see, these words spoken over me may have been the reality at that time, but they were not truth. The absolute, the absolute truth is, I am a child of God. Autism is only a diagnosis. It is not my DNA. I have Jesus' DNA. Because I have Jesus' Jesus's DNA, I am completely healed and made whole. And like my t-shirt says, my identity is in Jesus, not autism. When my mommy asked me what I thought autism meant when I was seven years old, I told her it meant I get to do lots of fun things because my mom kept me involved with fun activities. Now I age 12. I know that I have the authority over autism. Autism has not and will not dictate my life. One of my favorite confessions that I speak over myself. Jesus, I have your identity. I have a sound mind. I have your mind. I operate in complete focus. You have my attention. Anxiety, go. Echolalia, go. Fear, go. Deficits, go. I have had great accomplishments, but my greatest will always be living out my testimony so that everyone will see that they can take authority over autism and anything that is trying to hold them captive. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Wow, we can go home now. <laughs> Yes, yes, that is my precious lamb, my baby London. Give her another hand. <laughs> did y'all tell her, did y'all see where she told me to go sit down when I, yeah, did y'all catch that? Okay. <laughs> you know, I love her personality. She is always going to be a kid enjoy her life, live her best life, but she is going to prophesy in Jesus' name and minister the gospel in Jesus' name. So hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for that. So thank you all for being here with me this morning. Um, I would like to, first of all, thank my family. My brother and my sister are here. Yes. Stand. <laughs> yes. My work family is here. <laughs> I would like to thank my pastors, Pastor Terry and Pastor Kim. Um, when I first started coming to Impact, it was the first time I had ever gone to a church on my own because I've always been in a either a family church or a church that, I, that was at least connected to family. And so um, coming here was a huge step for me. Um, and there's actually one person that I want to acknowledge that is not here today, who I love and I consider him one of my dearest friends, is Yule. Because Yule, I would come and sit right there. I was scared. I was like, okay, this is a new church. You know, I don't see many of us here. I'm just being honest. That's what I was thinking. Uh, but you all, every Sunday, would say, hey, kiddo, how you doing over there? And then I'll never forget, there was one Sunday I was running behind. And when I ran in, right before the countdown started, he said, kiddo, I was worried about you. You weren't in your spot. And so it was, it was that simple kindness that Impact Church you just don't know what we have here, what we bring here that kept me coming, you know. Um, and not to mention, it just so happened that Sunday, um, Pastor Philip was preaching on uh, racism. And when he got up and he started to attack it, and he was attacking that thing hard, and he said, oh, you won't come up in here, and you won't 
have authority in this country. And I was just like, wow, because I'd never experienced that. Like, I know that I have white friends, you know, and all that, but to hear someone openly in the pulpit, and as well as Pastor Terry has, and our elders just really come out and say, no, 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 no. It is not a part of the kingdom of God. And so those were the things that really got me here. And I just want to thank you. So Impact Church, I won't make you stand, but give yourself a hand. I love you all so much. <laughs> I love you so much. Thank you. All right, let's get it going. Thank you, Lord. My intercession for you. Come now, Holy Spirit. Let your presence consume us. Jesus, thank you for being here with this reader. As every person reads every word in this book, I want each one to feel your presence, your tangible presence. Where your presence is, there is freedom. I want readers to know you are with them that you never have and you never will leave them. I want them to know that your arm is not too long to reach them, that you are Abba, Father, and Daddy. I want them to know that not only did you give your life for us, you also left a person who lives inside of us, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. This is why you had to leave us so quickly, so that he could stay on earth, because of this, we can be clothed with your power, and that same power will allow us to take authority over autism. I want this reader and every reader to know that they are not alone, that I am going to be completely transparent about my struggles, hurt, disappointment, and most importantly, the victories over them. My promise is to introduce or remind them of hope, you. I speak to every distraction and hindrance while they are reading. They must go. Let them be consumed with your love, your joy, and your peace. I want them to know that they cannot get enough of you, that you want them to come to you for everything, even when it seems so little and insignificant. You want them to know that everything that is a concern to them is a big deal to you. You love them so much. This book is not about me or London. It is about a relationship with you. Lord, throughout this book, this reader will take a huge leap of faith and list very specific prayer requests. Every prayer and request matters to you. I am so grateful that before we even ask, you have already answered. Let any fragments of memories of pain, abuse, and despair throughout this process be covered by your blood. I want every reader to know that you are the God who heals. It is always your will to heal. I want them to know that they are preferred, that you would have died for them even if they were the only one. I want them to know that, they, that you selected them before they were even formed in their mother's womb. I want them to know that they are your favorite son or daughter, that you took this reader's place and would do it again in less than a second. I want every reader to know that although they will read our testimony and think that there must be something special about me in London, there is something very special about them as well. We are not the lucky ones. We just have tapped into our birthright power and authority. And from this point forward, they will tap into theirs. I know that they will think that their situation is so stressful and it must be your will for them to remain like that that karma controls their lives, and that there is no possibility for a light at the end of the tunnel, that their child has autism or any other diagnosis, plain and simple. But I am so excited that they will now have the answer, you. If whoever reads this book knows me personally or has heard of me, I want them not to be caught up in my written words, but to know that each word has been spoken by you, Lord through me. These words were put into this book just for them. I want them to hear you speak directly to them. I know that the enemy's voice is loud, but your voice is louder. Father, you are speaking to their hearts, and any other voice is silence. 
We are ready, Lord, because we have you. Are you ready to take authority over autism? That's the intro of my book. Thank you. <laughs> and now, Miss Diana, this is the cover of my book. I'm revealing it here for the first time. You can clap. It's okay. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Glory to God. Glory to God. Okay. So today, God really wants me to share with something, share something with you so special. He wants me to remind you who he is. He wants me to remind you that he is your God, your Abba Father, and your Daddy. Father, I thank you for your people. And God, just have your way. I set aside preconceived notions, notes, whatever, God, you just in this moment right now have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. So before we can overcome and take authority, God began to really deal with me in this journey about my identity. And so to just kind of go back, and I am, I'm going to go through our story and our testimony, but the nuggets that God has carried me and what he taught me and how he wants me to share those with you today so that you can begin to tap into your birthright authority. So we were living in Tennessee and my husband at the time in London, we were living in Memphis and we were away from family. It was just us. And so when she was, you know, developing, I didn't know who to yeah, thank you, Laurel. I didn't know who to check her up against because I didn't have a baby around me. And so we would go and visit my sweet niece. And I tell you what, she was about this tall. But that girl, could she was running and talking and rolling her neck and everything. But London wasn't saying a word. And so, you know, it was just like, you know, finally my mom and my sister were like, you know, we've, you know, working in the system, the school system, We've worked with this. We've seen this a lot. And you may want to just go get London tested for speech. And so I said, okay, okay, we'll do that, you know. And so we did. We got her, went to try to get her tested for speech. And at the time, the person literally walked in, said to us, you know, maybe if you put her around other kids her age, she'll start to pick up on what they're doing and she'll talk more. And so... You know, at the time, again, I'm a new mom. Okay, if that's what you say we're supposed to do, then that's, let's just do that. And so we decided from that point forward, we were in Memphis, and we decided, you know what, let's just come back to Little Rock. Because the more I started doing my research, Arkansas, actually, when it comes down to early intervention, you can get a kid in in services like this. Memphis, before they would even say, Okay, maybe you need some early intervention. You were on a year's waiting list. And for me, I was like, you know, we don't have that kind of time. And so we um, came and we moved here. We moved here and immediately we got her into school. And once we got her into school, we had a speech therapist come and they evaluated her and London began receiving speech therapy. And so at that time, she just said, you know, in a very loving way, you know, she's really showing signs of autism. And honestly, you know how you hear a word, but you've never really heard it before. So it's like I knew what that was, but I didn't really know what that was. And so we just said, okay. And so we went and we got her tested at the Dennis Developmental Center and she was evaluated, and she was diagnosed with autism. And so, and I remember, um, if any parent is here, it's almost like they take you into this, Sarah's shaking her head, <laughs> they take you into this dark room, and you walk in, it's like dun, 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 and you're on one side, and the doctor's on the other side, and they're just like, okay, she has autism, here's a sheet of paper about autism, good luck. And I was like, Okay, so right there in the moment, 
And what I'm going to be talking to you about today is about the identity thief. Because in this world, in the society especially, we're required to always check a box, right? You go fill out an application, you go do this, they want to know your height, your age, your color, your race, your whatever. And so the enemy, since the beginning of time, because his struggle was identity, right? What happened? He had a struggle with identity. And so that's what caused the big war in the heavenlies. He thought he was something different. He had a struggle. And then once he left, what did he do? He went right on over to Eve. And it's been since the beginning of time, it's been this identity crisis. And so to tap into your authority, we have to know who we are. And this morning, he wants to remind you that you are his son and you are his daughter. And so in that moment that London was diagnosed with autism, it's like from there, there's a ripple effect of doctor's appointments. You're going to this doctor, this doctor, this doctor. And just like London gave her testimony, you're hearing these words spoken over. And for me, even though I am a person that considers myself very strong woman, you know, you can't tell me nothing, you know. After a while, after this label, you know, I went numb because I was going to doctor's appointment after doctor's appointment and they knew more than me. But I gave birth to her. You know what I'm saying? And it was, oh, this, and oh, she's not going to be able to do this, and she's probably going to need this, and y'all want to think about guardianship when she turns 18. And, you know, I had a friend that had to buy a house and have a special basement because they're going to need long-term care. And you're hearing this over and over and over and constantly and constantly and constantly, not to mention my marriage was failing. So, again, here comes another label, <laughs> another identity label. Now I'm divorced, single mom, African-American, with a child with autism. And so what happens is you start to consume yourself in that label, which is what the enemy tries to do. He wants you to stick in a label. He wants you to say, oh, yes, you know, depression. You know, I, I'm just, I just battle depression. Because what happens? When we take on that label, rather than take authority against that label, we reap what the benefits of that, that label. And so it's like I had this identity shift, you know, after going through that process of being constantly told she's not going to be able to do this, she's not going to be able to do this. And I thought about it, I said, wait, 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 wait. Autism has a name. There's no name greater than Jesus. Yeah, Autism has a name. There's no name greater than Jesus. Autism has a name. There's no name greater than Jesus. So you mean to tell me I'm just supposed to sit here and take it? Just because they said this is her diagnosis, then that's it? Autism wins? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. And so I began to embark on this journey of reclaiming our identity. Amen. Amen. And so doing that process, what happens is you don't know what else to do. So you're finding yourself going to a lot of support groups, other parents, you know, other people, because you want the support, you want the information. When you get around parents, you're going to learn about more information that doctors don't even know. And so the more I would go around parents and we would talk about those things, you know, it was, it was never, but look at the bright side or look at the outlook of this. It was always, yes, because of autism, we can't do this. We don't get to go on vacations anymore because of autism. We don't get to do this because of autism. Autism, 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 autism. And it got to a point that I was just, I really was just fed up with it. I was fed up with it because I was like, now wait a minute, again, you are the creator of this universe. You formed me. You knew me before I was even formed in my mother's room and yet, 
once again, this label is dictating my life. And so I was just like, Lord, surely not. Surely this can't be. And so I be just began to go on this journey of knowing him. And really, the only way we're going to really know ourselves is we're going to have to know him. And the way we're going to have to know him is, again, what Pastor Terry has said, is the intimate moments with him. And so one of the things that the Holy Spirit, the revelation that he gave me, and it's, and it's in the book, and Pastor Terry has talked about it, is pull out a chair. Now, I know to some people they think, okay, you know, okay, whatever. But, again, it's an identity thing. Because what you're saying is, if you can sit down and say, God, take a seat. We need to talk. What you're saying is, I trust you enough to know that I belong to you. That you're not way over there somewhere and I'm just little bitty over here. I trust you with my fears, my shame, my doubt, and everything. And because of that, if you'll come sit here and we have a conversation I'm going to talk to you about this. And I sat there and I just told him, look, this is, this is for the birds. This sucks. This sucks. You know, why, why, why? I did everything I was supposed to do when I was pregnant with her. I followed, I checked all the boxes. Again, another identity thing. I checked all the boxes. You know, I exercised, I didn't eat sushi, I didn't do this, you know, I didn't do that. I took all my vitamins. Heck, I was married when I had her. Identity. Identity. And so when I took that moment to really sit down and talk to him, and sometimes I talked to him like this, and sometimes, and sometimes it was, and then sometimes it was, Oh, and one more thing, and I'd come back to the chair. But it was like he had his arms stretched wide, like, hello, I've been waiting on you to have a conversation with you. And that is what he wants to say to you this morning. He has been waiting on you to have a conversation with you. Not formality, not, oh, Father God, the one who made the heavens and earth. You did this, you did this, and on the third day you rested. No, no. He's just like, he just wants you to say, I'm really mad at you right now. Because when you say that, you trust him enough to know that he won't judge you for saying it. That's what it boils down to. And so when I really start to sit back and think, and I'll never forget, I was living with my mom at the time because by this time, again, labels, divorce, child with autism, and I'm living with my mammy. Uh, <laughs> and um, we were, she was going to have to uh, transition to a new home. <laughs> my brother and my sister are laughing. She was going to have to transition to another house, and so me and London were going to need to find a new place to stay. And I'll never forget, I had a conversation. I, I said, come here, Lord. Now you mean to tell me. And I don't know why Beyonce came to my mind, but she did. I said, you mean to tell me, it says in Isaiah, that the Lord God is my husband. So you are my husband. Now, if Beyonce is mad at Jay-Z and she needs something from him, he's still going to roll over and go get it done because that is her husband, right? If y'all are mad or upset at each other, you're going to still do it, right? So I'm just like, the money that they got, the billions, it belongs to you anyway. So why am I struggling? And why am I without? And it was almost like he said, yeah, now you're talking. Now you're talking. I went into a different realm. And so that is why it's so important for us this morning to really, really check that. Because when you really think about, gosh, you are my daddy. You are my daddy. Oh, my goodness. I mean, just imagine yourself as a young child, and maybe you didn't have a daddy, but maybe you had a granddaddy or an uncle that no matter what you needed or what you wanted, 
They would, your, their faces would light up and you could go ask for this and go ask for that. And you didn't turn them away. They just ran to you. Can I please have some candy? Can I please have some candy? And they just go ahead. You, or, or even when Pastor Terry talks about McKenna and McCall and Alex asking stuff and he's just like, oh, go ahead. But it's like, that is our daddy. And so this morning, I want you to really resonate. The reason why we were able to take authority over autism is because we knew who our daddy was. So autism, you don't know my daddy. Have you ever been in a bullying situation and you're like, oh, that's all right. Because when I get my crew, yeah, she thought she was slick. Or I'm going to go home and tell my mama, ooh, my mama going to cuss them out. Ooh, we saved now. We saved now. We saved now. But you know, I mean, <laughs> but you know, you've been in a bullying situation and you knew that you can go get your crew, right? That is what he's saying. You said it's autism. You don't know who my daddy is. Depression. You don't know who my daddy is. Lack, you don't know who my daddy is. Fear, you don't know who my daddy is. Amen? Amen. 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 In John 3.3, 3, in the Passion Translation, um, Jesus said to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, listen to the eternal truth. Before a person can perceive God's kingdom realm, they must, they must first experience a rebirth. And so that is what he wants us to also experience today, a rebirth. Because I know, I know with identity, especially if you were born in a situation where your daddy left you or you don't even know who your parents are or you grew up in a home that was very chaotic or there was alcoholism or, you know, there's a generational curse for anxiety or PTSD or whatever it is. What Jesus is saying this morning is, it's just time for a rebirth. It's okay. Just rebirth. <laughs> just rebirth. Yes. And when I've had to minister to young people, that's usually the first thing they say when I'm talking to them and I'm discipling them. They say, well, you know, my daddy, you know, I never knew him and I had daddy issues. And I'm like, we all got daddy issues. But what I've learned and what the Holy Spirit has helped me with, honor them enough that they got you here. Honor them enough that they got you here. Okay, so my mom, my dad, I wasn't born in the best situation, but I was born. But what will happen, what you must do, you do a rebirth, hallelujah. And when you do your rebirth, you can enter into the kingdom realm. So it doesn't matter if you're unqualified. It doesn't matter, you know, if you didn't graduate from college or if you only got a fifth grade education. You have the opportunity to have a rebirth and be born through him, out of him, and you have his DNA. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? And so when I got that revelation about the rebirth, because of course with science and autism, it was always, okay, they think it's hereditary. They think it's the, um, what am I trying to say, y'all? Thank, thank you. Yeah, it's immunizations, thank you. <laughs> that, you know, they have all these factors that they think what it is, but the Lord is like, okay, if it is, oh, okay. That's why you need to be born again. That's why you need to experience your rebirth. Amen. And so I want to challenge you today to just have more moments like this where you're completely honest with him. You know, because I used to do this. It's almost like the prayer before the prayer, like I pray to fix up the prayer. Then I'm going to come talk to him about the prayer, if that makes sense. When he just wants you to come to him just as you are. And I'm going to tell you this, too. One thing that um, I am training London with this, because, I, you know, praise God for our ancestors. Praise God for it. You know, they didn't know a lot of things. They just didn't know. They didn't have the revelation, but we praise God for them. You know, we were just taught that you had to, there was this formality, right? So you couldn't pray to God unless you were postured a certain way, you know, on the third Sunday, facing this way. You know what I'm saying? And so what he is saying, just come, just come. Because the more you sit around, well, I'll talk to you tomorrow when I'm, you know, feeling, feeling better, Lord. And he's like, no, 
No, no, no, no, no. He wants you to come to him now. And so that is how we have been able to take authority over autism. We know who our daddy is. We know who our daddy is. Um, like I was saying with Satan, what he said to Eve, he said, did God really say that? See, that's what he's been saying to you. You know you're supposed to have authority over depression. Did God really say that? Or you know God has told you that you are going to be a storehouse for orphans. Did God really say that? Did he really say that to you? You're broke. You're in so much debt. Why would God say that to you? And if I went by the worldly system of all the box that need to be checked, I shouldn't be standing here. I shouldn't be standing here. If we're going to go by the boxes and check the boxes, no. But it's because of his love and his grace towards me. Is That's why I'm here today. That's why London and I are able to take authority of, over autism. We know who we are in Christ. We say that we have his DNA. And because of that, we can trample on snakes. We can trample on scorpions. And we can tell anything, no matter what it is, you're not bigger than my God. Do you know who my daddy is? Do you know who my daddy is? Go, get, go, go ahead and go do what you got to do. But you don't know who my daddy is. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. So I just want to leave you with this. Um, as London mentioned in her uh, testimony, and I'll be, I'll be honest with you, you know, a lot of times, and I think that's why God really wanted uh, the book to be written. Oh, I want to talk about that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I knew it was something I was missing. Um, I just wanted to kind of share with you just briefly um, how did this come about, the writing of the book. So back in 2008, they had the big UAMS layoff, right? And so it was summertime, and I said, okay, Lord, what are we going to do? I ain't got no job. He said, um, been waiting on you to write that book. And so I said, oh, okay, okay. So I went and got my laptop, and I sat there, and I was like, okay. And before I knew it, I just, it was just like this. See, a lot of you, he just needs for you to take that first step. He's been telling you, I want you to write that book. I need you to go build this, but you won't even go check out land. You won't even go look at land surveys. You won't even go look in, you know, the real estate ads. He's just saying, make the first step. I will take care of the rest. And my first step was I sat there with a the laptop like, we finna write a book. And he showed me. <laughs> and so I went and I started Googling. I said, well, I don't even know who, to, who publishes books. You know, I don't know. And so I started Googling. And I said, well, let me Google some of my favorite, you know, authors. And so, of course, we have a favorite author in the house. Amen. And so I was like, oh, this is Pastor Terry's uh, publisher. So I you know, went and went online, and they have this um, where you can fill out what you want to do, right? They have this, you know, send three chapters, you know, what's your book about, how you're going to market it, and all that. Sent it in, and a good friend of mine, she helped me proof it, and then it said the blanket email. Thank you for submitting. If you don't hear from us in six to eight weeks, we passed. And I was just like, okay, well, Lord, I did it. You told me to write it. I told you it wasn't going to work. Whatever. <laughs> you can't say, you can't put this off on me because I tried. <laughs> That's how I talk to him. See, it's an identity thing. He my daddy. I talk to him like I talk to Bernard. That's how I used to talk to Bernard. <laughs> Bernard with <laughs> And I'd be like, yeah, daddy, yeah, daddy. So that's how I talk to him. And that's why I know who I am. I know I have his DNA. And so when it comes to taking authority, I say, you don't know who my daddy is. So I'm just bringing it back, bringing it back to remind you. But um, in less than 36 hours, literally, because it was vacation Bible school. Um, we were in Babylon that year. <laughs> it was vacation Bible school. And I turned in the proposal that Tuesday night. 
by early Thursday morning, I had an email from Destiny Image, and they said, can we please talk to you now? Like, can you give us, can, you, can we call you now? And I was like, oh, oh, Joe, oh. I was just playing. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know you were for real. I didn't know you were for real. What they want to talk about? Why they calling me? What they want? He's just quiet. Hello, I'm talking to you. <laughs> I don't know why God is here sometimes. He's here sometimes. He's here sometimes. But I, sometimes I talk to him like, hello, hello, where are you? But, um, and I, I talked to him, and they said, no one wants to tackle this. No one wants to touch it. And you want to know why? Because the enemy loves putting you in a box. Because the more he can make you believe that you're more autistic than more of a child of a God, he can keep you there. Then what he does is he wants you to go ahead and join the other people that are in that same like-mindedness, and then there's no growth. And so I started from that point forward going through a journey of, I got to come out of that. It's okay for people to say London has a diagnosis, but I shouldn't be talking more about it than Jesus. It's okay to go to support groups. It's okay to participate in autism events. But when I leave there, they need to know that, hey, she loves Jesus versus, oh, we have in common because we have kids on the spectrum. You understand what I'm saying? So what God is wanting us to do is shift our focus. Don't make the focus on something that didn't create you, didn't die for you, wouldn't give anything for you, but a label. And so from that point forward, now, the book will be out in March 2020. Actually, four months from today, March 17th. And I just praise God for the journey. You know, one thing, um, just to encourage you, um, if you are thinking about writing a book, one thing that I can say that truly blessed me is there was no, I mean, it was literally no blueprint for this. He just wanted me to trust him. So there were moments that I'd sit in front of the laptop like, hello, this manuscript is due. And you said we were writing this book. Hello, hello, hello. I'm like, are you not listening? This manuscript is due. And it's like I wasn't getting anything. And then there would come moments where it would just flow and flow. But I kept telling him, but I'm done, I'm done. And he said, you're not done until I tell you you're done. And to be honest with you, guess what? That was not even a book. That was just a little paragraph to a greater and bigger story and a bigger journey. And that's why the enemy wants to steal your identity. That's why he wants you to focus on your family line and your mama didn't do this and your daddy didn't do this. Now, he wants you to deal with that. You know, I'm not saying it all. And I tell parents, I'm not saying ignore. I'm saying take authority. You know, and so he wants you to be caught up in all that because when you're, when you're distracted from all that, it takes away from you rem being reminded of who you really are. Who you really are. The same power that raised him from the grave lives in you. So are you ready to take authority over autism, over depression, over PTSD, over lack, over poverty, over racism? Amen. That's what I have.